Welcome back to Money Math. This is my series where I break down the actual mathematics and formulas behind concepts related to money. Today, we're gonna to talk about the opposite of a get rich quick scheme. We're gonna talk about getting rich slowly, like over decades. Specifically, we're gonna talk about the mathematics behind making a consistent series of small payments regularly, investing that money and building it up until you have a larger amount of money. This is the core principle behind annuities, mortgages, retirement planning, and many other different financial instruments. By the end of the video, we'll have actually built our own calculator, linked down in the description, that will let you make the actual calculations, playing around with whatever assumptions you wish, and to really get a sense for how much money you need to be investing regularly to achieve your financial goals. To get started, let's assume that I want to save a million dollars by the time that I retire. Not for any particular reason, this is just a nice round number. And let's also suppose that I have 30 years remaining until my retirement. Now, unless I was to get some like big lump sum like an inheritance or winning the lottery or my YouTube channel just completely blows up, then I'm not going to be able to make a million dollars overnight. I'm going to have to do that by regularly investing. But how much? So the big idea is that if I look out to the future, I'm going to make some payment, some dollar figure now, but then I'm going to make that same payment with regularity as we go on into the future. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to assume that I'm going to make one payment per year. Now, if I want to make a million dollars over 30 years, you'd think perhaps that a million dollars divided by 30 years, that means I need to save $33,333 every year. And that's true if it was not for the magic of interest. Now, I actually introduced the idea of interest and talked about simple interest versus compounded interest versus continuously compounded interest in the first episode in my Money Math series. So what I encourage you to check out that video first if you haven't seen this. But the point is that I don't want to invest this $33,333 every year. I want to invest substantially less than that but using the power of interest, it's going to grow to the million dollars regardless. Okay, so what kind of formula should we build? I want to start with some terminology. So I'm going to let P sub T denote the principal after T years. Principal just means the amount of money that you're going to have. So for example, P of 30 would be the amount that I would have in 30 years when I'm claiming I'm going to retire. Then I'd have an interest rate, which I will denote with the letter R. And finally, I'm interested in making an annual payment of some amount X, an amount that I don't currently know what it's going to be. Okay, so let's try to figure out what a formula for P sub T is going to be, my formula for my principal after T years. Well, I can do the first of them pretty simply. If I do what's P after zero years, my idea is that I'm going to make one payment right now, my first annual payment right now. So at the beginning, all I have is X. P naught is just equal to X. Okay, well then what about P1? Well, P1, so what happens in one year, has two different components to it. First of all, there's the growth that happens on the payment that I make today. As in, I started with X, but in one year, the interest rate on this I'm going to use simple interest here, is just going to be 1 plus r. That is, it's just growing a little bit. It's a little bit bigger than the x that I started with because it's had one year to accumulate interest. And then I make a second payment after one year, and so now I get this additional plus x. Okay, what about after two years? Well, this has got three terms now. The first term is my initial payment x, and then it has two years to grow of interest. So 1 plus r squared. The second term is one year of growth, so that's the payment I make in one year, and then it grows to the second year. And then finally, at the start of the second year, I make another payment. I've got a third term here at another x. I'm going to simplify this expression just to make a point a little bit clear. Namely, I've just taken that final x and replaced it with x times 1 plus r to the zero, which is just a funny version of 1. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make clear that the exponents are like 1 plus r squared, 1 plus r to the 1, 1 plus r to the 0, and so forth. So that means that if I now want to jump to the general formula for p sub t, well, there was an x in every single term, so I put an x out the front. But then there's this fancy summation symbol, and the summation symbol just says, look, I'm going to be adding up a whole bunch of terms that look like x times 1 plus r to various powers. How many powers? Well, there's going to be a zeroth term, so if you plug in i equal to 0, that's 1 plus r to the 0. There's going to be a first term, so 
1 plus r to the 1, 1 plus r squared, 1 plus r cubed, every term as it goes along gets a higher and higher power. And this is what this summation terminology does. Now this formula is okay, but if you're actually trying to add this up manually, it would take a lot of terms to add them up. So I'm going to use here a little bit of trick because this is something called a geometric series. A geometric series is just the sum of some expression, 1 plus r in this case, raised to consecutive powers, 1 plus r to the i for a sum of different. And the great thing is for a geometric series like this, there's a simple way to write it down. Basically what you do is you leave the x out the front and then it's whatever that base is, that 1 plus r, to the power of t plus 1 minus 1 divided by the same base 1 plus r minus 1. As to why this is the case, well, I'll link a previous video of mine where I talk about the geometric series, but I'm just using that tool to simplify my formula right now. I notice there's a plus one and a minus one in the denominator, so I can clean it up and just leave an r left on the denominator. So this is my formula. Okay, so let's try to figure out x for a specific case. I'm gonna say I want to figure out p of 30, so that's my principal in 30 years, and I want it to be a million dollars. Now. As to the interest rate, I'm going to use 6% or 0 0.06. When you're doing financial planning, there's a lot of different options you can put here. For example, over about the last 60 years, the S&P 500, which is one of the major stock indexes, has averaged about an 8% return. And typically, my understanding when you're doing financial planning, and I want to be clear here, I'm a math professor, not a financial planner or anything like this. Typically, you take a couple percentage off from that historical return, so something like 6% is a reasonable number. This would correspond to you regularly investing it in the market. It's just an assumption I'm going to use for the computation, 6%. If I plug those numbers into the formula I just had, I plug in the million, I plug in the r equal to 0 0.06, and I plug in that the t was 30. Notice the formula is always t plus 1, so 30 plus 1 in the exponent. Now, I want to solve for x. So I can just rearrange this equation, not a big deal. I've rearranged this equation and this is what I have. This is too complicated for me to compute out in my head, so I'm going to turn to a calculator app that I really love and the sponsor of this video, which is the Maple Calculator. And so let me go and plug this in. So it is a million times the 0 0.06 divided out by bracket one plus 0 0.06 all to the power of 31 minus one in the denominator. And what do I get? 11,792. By the way, I put the links to the Maple Calculator app down in the description. I would encourage you to check it out. It really is a truly nice calculator app for your phone. Now, what I really want to focus on with this 11,792 number is just how much smaller that is than the 33,333 that we began with, the scenario that would happen if there was an interest. So instead of spending over 30,000 a year to save up for a million dollars, now we're assuming just a little over 10,000 per year needs to be saved to make a million dollars in 30 years. To gain a little bit better of an intuition between the length of time that you're investing, the size of the payment that you're making, what the actual interest rate is, I've actually gone and implemented this formula inside of, well, MapleSoft's other product who's sponsoring this video, which is MapleLearn, that allows me to make sort of interactive workbooks like this. And what I've done here is I've made a few different sliders for the payment after each period, which I've currently set to that 11,792 that we computed, the interest rate, which is 6%, and then I also have a new thing here for the number of periods per year. Previously, we were talking about a payment that was once per year. And I've come down here and I've created a table of values that tell me what the principle is. And this formula is almost exactly what we saw previously. It's just that I allowed for the option of paying more regularly and compounding more regularly. And so you could divide the interest rate by n payments per year. And then the exponent has to have a multiplication by n as well. Either way, when you do this with n equal to 1, it makes no difference. And notice that down here after 30 years have gone by, well, it's a million bucks, a little bit less, because I didn't include the pennies in the payment. On the right-hand side, you can see this nice little graph that illustrates, well, the growth of what you're making as time goes on. And the part that I find so interesting about this is it shows the power of compounded interest. The difference between right now, when you've just made the first payment, and five years from now, well, it's not that bad. I mean, you, you make $82,000 when you've paid this 11,000 whatever five times. It's a little bit of growth. But in a different five-year period, so for example, this one here between 
25 years and 30 years, the amount that you're making is way larger. So 25 is about 700,000 going up to 30, which is about a million. You're making almost 300,000 in that last five years. As in so much of the value of this compounding interest happens at the end. I even extended all this way down to 40 years. So if you make a million dollars by doing this for 30 years, you make almost $2 million by doing it for 40 years. So for me, who's 36, and maybe I isn't gonna have 40 years until I'm gonna to want to retire, that's a little bit more challenging. But if you're younger than me and can be investing regularly for 40 years, you're gonna be able to do a lot less. Okay, so, so let's play around with the numbers a little bit here. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna switch it from n equal to one down to 52, because I like paying per week. Somehow thinking about how much I have to spend per week just makes things a little bit more reasonable. That's of course an enormous amount. I'm not gonna be spending $11,000 per week, but we can come down here and try to figure out, well, what would be a more reasonable number? How about $150 per week, just to play around with it. And then what do we have? And so after 30 years, that would give me $656,000. So if I start sliding it up, you see how on the right-hand side the growth happens. And the 30-year dot, which represents this one that's third from the end, goes 30, 35, and then finally 40 years. If I want to get that third year dot up around the million dollars, okay, it looks like it's gonna be somewhere in there, just a little over $200 per week is gonna give me a million dollars in 30 years. If I went for 40 years, almost $2 million. So the length of the period, my goodness, is very important. And then the other thing we can play around with is our slider here on the annual interest rate. If I slide it down, 5% interest, 4% interest, 3% interest, you see how much it starts to hurt things. So 3% interest versus 6% interest, well, now after 40 years, you're making less than a million dollars with this same payment. And so the relationship between how much you're investing per week and what you anticipate the interest rate over the length of your investment to be is gonna be actually very important to this particular relationship. Now, I do want to note several caveats about this formula. Firstly, in the next video in Money Math, we're really gonna explore the difference between something called future value and present value. So if you've been looking up an annuity calculator like this one from other places, I just want to note that I'm doing a future value annuity calculator that tells you you get a million dollars in the future. I'll talk about how to deal with this in terms of present value in a later video. But I also want to note that there's so many simplifying assumptions when you start using a tool like this, like that you're gonna have this interest rate that's gonna last for 30 years and be exactly consistent over that 30 years, and you're gonna make the exact same size of the payment. I mean, these things are gonna be in flux, and even how much money should you save, that's also something that depends on many different factors. So I want to go in with a little bit of grain of salt here when talking about this formula, but I do think it's worthwhile to get a little bit of a sense of how much you should be investing regularly right now to be able to achieve your goals that you want to get in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Definitely check out the MapleSoft products down in the description, both MapleLearn that I'm using right now and the calculator app for your phone. And we'll do some more math in the next video.